Hopefully today will be a little bit better than it was a few days ago when this Sony PVM was shipped in. Now this was shipped in by a Patreon member who hoped to have this serviced and unfortunately they went to a local FedEx in their area and uh, they said in the FedEx store that they could pack this PVM correctly and of course <laughs> you can tell that was not done right and FedEx shipped it and it was one of the worst breaks. Obviously the bezels just completely destroyed but the bigger problem is check out the main board in here it's been just demolished a whole chunk of it right there is broken down um, smashed its way down in there and then we even have an inductor that's broken off the main board i think probably right there is where it broke off maybe since fedex packed it in-house they did pay the claim on it to the client so they were able to collect the insurance money but outside of individually salvaging this for parts it's going to be difficult to get much of use out of it. It literally is nothing more than a few parts that are really good. That was a poorly packed one. I didn't do a video of the unboxing. This one is mine. It is a Sony PBM, only an eight incher, but it is the higher resolution model. Hopefully it survived. This was a three day ground shipment from UPS. This was an eBay purchase and I bought this one because it has a specific problem that's pretty fixable, documented as fixable, um, and it was a good deal for it. Uh, but I'm just hoping that it uh, didn't get destroyed here because look, it looks like it got run over by a truck or something on this corner. Let's get it down into the shop and we'll cut it open. We're in the shop and I'm just going to open this box and hopefully the CRT's made it. All I've done is open the, the first layer that did have the address label so I won't show you that but not much at all um, inside the box a couple layers of paper and that's it and it's a single wall box, you can see right there, not double walled. Bottom of the bezel looks okay. Power button looks okay. And look at this. So, looks like according to Ray, Chassis 1993, new tube installed in 2004. So that's a good sign, hopefully. All right, let's look at the front side. Hopefully nothing's busted. All right, I mean, let's see. It looks like I don't hear anything rumbling around. That's a great sign. Something weird I do feel is, check this out. Oh man, we've got like <laughs> packing peanuts some packing peanuts down here in our battery bay. You can hear it come on and the 15 kilohertz whines start to go there. And I do feel some static on the tube. And look at that. I see our picture coming up. And as it sits, it's working quite nicely, right? No issues with this screen. Even the geometry looks great. The colors are sharp. And it does, again, have the 450 line tube, which is higher resolution than the others. But it's supposed to have an issue. All right, this is the issue that was listed. It's that we don't have any color in composite or even S-video mode. I have switched over to composite real quickly to demo this. But that's what I saw in the listing of this monitor. And it's the reason it was discounted and sold to me at just under $160. So yeah, that's the issue. We have grayscale and we don't have any color where we should have color, uh, not any kind of button problem. Let's see if we can't get this corrected. Well, after doing some research, I found a nice video from RGB Rob. So thank you, Rob. He did a lengthy video on how to repair this exact problem and we're going to zoom in here at some parts I'm poking around at on the color board. Again, this board on the 
right hand side of the CRT tube and down here towards this bottom corner uh, there's these two potentiometers. Sony put out a bulletin saying that these potentiometers have a problem. They tend to, they tend to fail and cause grayscale. Now in the past I've done videos about this problem and I've, my solution was always to just reflow solder on this entire board in those videos and then that would solve the problem. And so that made me wonder is what if it's just these two potentiometers and the solder on them is definitely going bad. And that's maybe the reason that it's happening is just bad solder. All right, these are the two potentiometers right here. And you can see I've still got some flux residue on here where I had reflowed the solder on both those points. And I think we're ready to do a test now and see if that makes any difference. If it doesn't, then we'll go through and do the full repair according to Rob's video. Okay, so this is Super Nintendo hooked up through S-Video, which had the grayscale problem that we showed. Same thing, anything that was in composite or S-Video had the grayscale problem. And now we've got all our colors back. So all we needed to do was reflow the solder. So. I would actually recommend you do that before going and ordering and replacing those parts. Try this first and see if it'll fix your grayscale monitor. Yeah, so here's our S-Video connection going to the Super Nintendo. Now we're going to use a composite video signal coming from a Sega Genesis. And we can switch inputs and see how that works. Ah, look at there, composite video, blue, green, white. We've definitely got all our colors here. That's the 240p test suite running. So this is, this is all good. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Please, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will tell you that I've got two more of this exact same monitor on the way with this problem, the grayscale problem, just like this one. And we shall do tests and see if those two can be repaired simply by reflowing that solder. And if you enjoyed the video, please do leave me a like. I will see you guys next time with some more retro content.